Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, spending some time with us today. My name is Cherise Smith, and this webinar is being brought to you from Applied Software. Today, our primary topic will be Autodesk Desktop Subscription. Um, but before we get started, there are a few things we wanted to uh, go over. One of the things we wanted to let you know about is our uh, YouTube channel. Um, this is a channel where this webinar, as well as any others that we've done, uh, you can find historically logged there in case there is something that you want to go back to or in case a colleague missed this and you want to share it with them. Um, we also want to let you know about live lab learning. This is an area where uh, we uh, list all of our classes that are available. We do do virtual live training in all areas that you see here, utility, civil, product design, manufacturing, building design, and construction. So you can see our class offerings there. These are all done at your desktop with a live instructor. If you are interested, we're happy to answer any questions you may have concerning the venue or subject matter. We wanted to let you know about some upcoming events since we don't necessarily know where everyone is today. We want to make you aware of all of them. Uh, coming up in the near future, we have BIM and Beer in Atlanta. This is an event primarily centered around our construction technology group. Then for our manufacturing group, we have Celebrate Manufacturing. This is an event to, to celebrate National Manufacturing Day. And then we will also be at the DBIA Florida Show in Orlando in early October. We also do these webinars from time to time, uh, just in, in all technology groups, um, that being in the manufacturing workflow and technology. This is a unique webinar where we will not have specific subject matter, but rather we'll be accepting questions from the attendees of the webinar and have the expertise to answer those questions um, during the webinar. So it is a live interactive webinar, a little different than today. Um, we'll also be focusing on infrastructure design, um, rapid 3D modeling, visualization, simulation, and stakeholder communication. Infrastructure is um, a, a large uh, initiative within the Autodesk product line. You will be hearing a lot more information about products called InfraWorks and the modules that complement that that software. We also have BIM and Facilities Management. This is primarily centered around our higher education institutions. For those of you in the education market, the model on licensing has changed significantly for that arena in the last year, and so we're just constantly uh, trying to keep everyone up to speed on those changes. Important dates and changes. So this is some of the information that is centered primarily around the subject matter of today. So this is the impetus for us reviewing desktop subscription with you. Is that on January 31st, 2016, this will be the last day to purchase new perpetual and new network licenses of individual products. So this includes products like the AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Revit Architecture, and the rest of the list that you see on the screen. This does not mean that you will not that you will no longer be able to purchase suites. So those of you that currently have suites of products, such as building design suite, product design suite, plant design suite, those there is no change on this particular day. So on January 31st, if you call after that date and you want a seat of AutoCAD, the only means to purchase that would be through desktop subscription. And as we go through the webinar today, you're going to learn what that actually means. And then on uh, February 1st, 2016, Autodesk will introduce network subscription for the recently retired products as well as continue to offer desktop subscription. So what this means is that today, if you have a desktop subscription license, it is not networkable. But after February 1, 2016, there will be a network subscription 
offering. Customers will still be able to cross-grade from current product to the suites, so if you have a Revit architecture after February 1 and you want to go to Building Design Suite Premium, you are still capable of doing that. So, if you have questions, feel free to type them in the window and we will fill them as they come in. Because this webinar is about alleviating confusion in this model change. So, some other important dates. On July 31st, 2016, it will be the last day to purchase new perpetual and new networks of the suites. So, I want to go back. On January 31st, individual products will no longer be available in Perpetual. And July 31st, the suites will no longer be available. I guess I ought to back up and make sure everyone understands the primary difference between a Perpetual license and a desktop license. A Perpetual license is a license that many of you may be familiar with and own today. That is a license in which you purchase the product and, and choose to maintain what we call maintenance subscription on year over year. This has been our way to go to market with Autodesk license up until here recently. About a year ago, Autodesk made available in some products desktop subscription. So the difference between perpetual and desktop is the desktop subscription is made available for a specific term. So that license is available to you for a specified period of time of which then it expires and you choose whether to continue the use of that by renewing or you don't. So we'll get into more details about that uh, later on. Also, on August 1st, 2016, Autodesk will introduce network subscription for recently retired suites as well as continue to offer desktop subscription. So the same thing, as they retire Perpetual, they will make network available in the desktop. We will offer desktop subscription, network subscription, and maintenance subscription for all existing renewal contracts. So if you have existing perpetual licenses, and this is something that we get asked a lot. If I have a perpetual license today, what happens next year? If you choose to maintain the subscription as you know it today, there will be no change on those particular licenses. So now, let's dive deeper into desktop subscription in and of itself. So now we're going to focus particularly on what desktop subscription is and its benefits and when it is most applicable. So today you're going to learn the new Autodesk subscription framework and then the benefits of this framework. So the Autodesk subscription framework of which we've alluded to several times today is desktop subscription. So that's that term license that will expire or maintenance subscription, that is the subscription that is attached to your perpetual licenses today that you renew annually, or cloud service subscription. So about desktop subscription. Desktop subscription software is a, is a purchasing option that allows your customers to license Autodesk software on a term basis to meet a variety of business and budget considerations. So we'll, we'll talk about when desktop subscription is, a, is highly beneficial. Desktop subscription software, you can get details on um, the different suites and the products available at this website. So one of the things that desktop subscription allows is greater choice and easier accessibility. So it has never been easier for customers to get Autodesk software and have the purchase options that meet their unique needs. So desktop subscription is available in several different terms. You can do monthly desktop subscription, you can do it quarterly, 
annually, and most recently, they have offered a multi-year desktop subscription. So if you know you're going to need the software for an extended period of time, you can go ahead and purchase the subscription for up to three years. So what are the benefits of doing such? Well, you have access to the latest tools. So if you purchase a multi-year desktop subscription license, then you are guaranteed to have the latest and greatest at all times. We feel like in the future we will begin to see Autodesk release enhancements at different intervals of the year rather than waiting to the time frame that we're accustomed to a major release being put out. So you will have access, if you're on desktop subscription, to continuous enhancements to the software regardless of the time that they occur. It's also a lower cost of entry. So with desktop subscription, because you are purchasing it for a term, you do not have a large capital investment on the front end to buy the software, which is often what we view perpetual license as. Perpetual license, we make a capital investment, and then we have an operating expense on that investment in the following years. With desktop subscription, you have a lower barrier to entry from a cost standpoint, and you're able to look at it as an operating expenditure as opposed to a capital expenditure. It also allows companies to ramp up or scale down. So if you happen to be in an industry that is very project driven, then you have probably experienced times where you needed to ramp up your staff for a particular project knowing that your staff will shrink back to its core after the project ends. So desktop subscription allows the flexibility of companies to ramp up. So if I need 10 additional people because we have an influx of projects that are going to last for two years, I can do that. And then at the end of those two years, I can shrink back down by not renewing those licenses. There's also reduced risk involved with desktop subscription. You don't have that sunk cost. So maybe you're adding additional employees and you're not certain you know, how many of those employees will be retained over the long haul. So if you buy desktop subscription on the front end, you reduce your risk on, on expenditure to add that overhead so it allows companies to, to bring on those additional people sooner rather than later. As many of us have gone through the economic downturn, um, oftentimes it required our employees to do more work because we were hesitant to bring on additional overhead for fear that we would not be able to retain them long term because maybe we weren't sure about the economic environment. So this allows you to hire according to your needs, and reduce the risk because of the lower barrier to entry from cost. So these are just some of the key benefits that we've reviewed. Um, you have uh, access to the latest software releases and enhancements. You have control over determining the term or the length of the license. It is a license model that is based on user. It is a user term-based license. So that is a little bit different with the perpetual license. We, when we network it, we can float it amongst many users. With desktop license, as of today, they are, they are licensed to a named user. However, please understand you do maintain the ability to change the user. So if I have a license that I've licensed for an annual term, if I need to move that from one employee to another, I do have the control to change the user. Um, it also allows another uh, unique feature of the desktop subscription is if you have employees that travel globally or overseas, it is very easy for them, because of the name used for license rights, to carry that license with them for a stint out of the country. So, if you have someone who's going to be on site out of country for a specific period of time, this is a very easy way to equip them 
with the software that they need to uh, complete that turn out of country. Some other questions that often come up when we talk about desktop subscription is, uh, are pre previous versions uh, available to me? And the answer is yes. So if you choose to, uh, to do, purchase a term license of a particular software, but a job warrants or a project warrants that you need a previous version, you may uh, request that and that is made available to you. You also have uh, several cloud uh, services available to you based on the license that you choose or need. And then cloud storage is also uh, provided. So you get 25 gigabytes with every active subscription license. The storage is reduced to five gigs once the license is allowed to expire. And you have 30 days after expiration to download anything and everything that you have placed in the cloud. You may also purchase additional cloud credits. These are uh, credits that allow you to perform cloud services such as rendering in the cloud, those type things. And then basic support is included for the products and suites of on-desktop subscription. And then there is also uplifted support available if you so choose through advanced support. So now you may be wondering, am I the right candidate or is my company the right candidate for desktop subscription? So let's look at some of the best uh, people that fit the mold for desktop subscription. So if you're a new customer, maybe you're starting a business on your own, you're going out on your own, you're a small business, and you don't have a lot of capital to invest up front or you want to minimize your upfront capital expenditure, Desktop subscription is the absolute perfect model to get you up and running with no compromise of the tools you choose because you can afford to choose the best tool and also it will allow you to um, span the expenditure over the course of the time of the turn, making it an operating expense. Also, it goes back to those small to medium medium-sized businesses, let's say you're, you are a, an established business with a core team, it allows you the ability that if your core team is maxed out, it allows you the ability to bring on that additional staff, take on those additional projects, and hire contract uh, workers to supplement your core staff, interns, or even consultants with reduced risk. So we often see that um, large clients that bring in um, interns in the summer, uh, college students in the summer, they bring them in. Oftentimes they've not been able in the past to provide them tools to work because they couldn't give up a license from their core staff to allow the intern the, the software license to work on. Well, desktop subscription fits perfectly, allowing them to basically license the software for the three months that the intern will be on site and really increase their bandwidth from having those additional people on staff for that time. And you can also apply that same mentality to new projects and also contractors. So here is a nice um, graph that kind of helps you understand um, desktop subscription and how it fits. If you are in a long-term uh, project, um, you know that it's going to extend over the course of two to three years, then you're going to fall in that upper right-hand quadrant. So multi-year desktop subscription is going to be your best bet. Um, if you know that it's going to, a project is going to extend for a year, but could potentially extend out to, to 15 months, then start with the annual desktop and then you can always renew quarterly or monthly. If you're looking at interns, then quarterly desktop makes sense. And then, and then if you are on a, a very tight budget and you just know that uh, you need to, to really, really reduce your uh, expenditure and your risk from a monthly standpoint, then monthly um, 
desktop subscription may be the best fit there. Also, this allows you the ability, if you're a longtime AutoCAD user, which we still have lots and lots of those out there, but you've wanted to move into a Revit or an inventor type 3D modeling space, this, is, this allows you to really feel safe in moving in that direction without making a huge expenditure. So basically what we see as desktop subscription is twofold. It allows you to, to really get your hands uh, involved in the next step of your modeling career or your, uh, your license choice. And it also frees up money for you to train yourself in order to ensure success. A lot of times we've seen companies say, I spent so much on the software, I can't afford to train. And desktop subscription alleviates most of those challenges. That concludes it. I don't know that if we had any questions, but we're happy to field any questions that you may have. But that is kind of just an overview of what desktop subscription is all about. You will begin to hear more and more about this as these license model changes go into effect. Uh, the first date being January 31st and then again on July 31st, all 2016. Hi there, Sharice. It looks like we have one question. Um, and that would be, is there a limitation on how many revisions you can go back? Yes, there is. I think that that is a question surrounded and, around previous version requests. And it looks like, yep, he uh, continued on. He said, right now we have a license for the current year and three previous years. With this desktop subscription model, can you go back four or five years? No. The same criteria apply to desktop subscription that applies to perpetual. So you, you would have current release and three years back would be made available to you. Okay, and here's another one. Can you order Revit, LT, and desktop? You certainly can. It is available today, and um, it is an excellent way to get involved in that product. Okay, and then the last question is, how do you manage these subscriptions? This, um, I would highly recommend that um, you familiarize yourself with the subscription portal. Um, we have had several uh, webinars uh, solely based around teaching people to navigate and manage their license within the subscription portal. And that is where this access will reside. So that is where if you need to change that user, uh, named user license from, you know, employee X to employee Z, you would, that's where you would make those changes available. Okay, it looks like that's all the questions we have for today. All right, thank you so much for joining us. We hope if you have any questions, that you will follow up. You're more than welcome to send uh, any questions you have concerning product, licenses, um, anything to that email address there. Our marketing department will make sure that it gets uh, to the in the right hands of the sales team to get back to you. So thank you for spending some time with us today and have a great day.